Welcome back to Twin Cities Live. It was in August that I headed down Highway 52 to meet the man behind Greg's Meats in Hampton. This was part of our 12 Days of Grilling series. series rather. Some customers, get this, drive nearly 200 miles just one way to pick up his quality products. Okay, that is my kind of spot. So Greg sells thousands of pounds of prime rib, a Christmas dinner staple for many. But before you buy, he's here to ensure you get the best cut. We are delighted to welcome Greg Endres to Twin Cities Live. Hi, Greg. Greg, our buddy. Nice Good to, to see you. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Shake the hand of this man. Feel I would love hand. to. That is a man who, that is a Minnesotan hand right there. This he is a, hard. a farmer. I'm telling you, he lives the real life. One of 11 kids, and now he's got this fabulous business. Okay, let's talk prime rib. And uh, I want to have you help us. When we go in and we're looking for prime rib, you say there are two questions that we should ask, and those are: Is it choice? And how long has the rib been aged? Let's start with: Is it choice? What does that, what does that mean? mean? Uh, choice refers to the quality of the meat that you're looking at. Okay. Um, it's the age of the beef. You want a nice young animal, and that's where your choice comes from. Okay. The Choice is actually measured by the amount of marbling in the eye. That's that little bit of specks of fat that you see. Is this like choice that. right here? This is choice this is right choice. here. Oh, he's not going to bring us unchoice. So what is this? Like, is this choice? That stuff back there, that marbling back there? That it's it's like here? if you look on the inside of the meat, you see the little white specks. Yeah. That's a good thing. That's, that's the choice portion of that. If it, if it doesn't have that, you don't quite have the flavor, the tenderness, the juiciness. That's your flavor, your tenderness, your juiciness that, you know, is associated with the choice piece of meat. So you say young animal but aged. Okay, aged. what does that mean? Why do we want it to be aged? Um, it just increases the tenderness of the meat. Mm -hmm. It makes it more flavorful. The prime ribs we're selling will have seven to eight weeks of age at Christmas time on What's them. What's the minimum, do you think? Oh, it depends. Different people have different ideas what the minimum is. Yeah. You know, I, I won't say good or bad one way or the other. We like six to seven to eight weeks. All right. That's what we prefer to have one, our prime ribs. We bought them the first week in November. I have them in cold storage already, getting ready for the holidays. Look at that. When you age them, and I don't know this, are they, are, is there seasoning on them, that, a part of that aging process? No, um, you don't want to season meat too much before you use it because the salts will dry your meat out. Okay. It's good to season the day before you want to start using your meat. Um, season the night before. We have them in cooking bags when we do hours, preparing for people to come in. They order the cooking, the meat. We put it in a cooking bag. We season it. They take it home the next day. Put a cup of water in it. Put it in the oven. We give them cooking instructions. Ease and convenience. What the today's consumers looking for. And they're, they're good to go. Now, okay, yep. I do want to ask because always the question is when you're going in and you're thinking, how much do I need to buy for my gathering? So for how much are you planning for per person with if, prime rib? If that's your main meat that you're serving and a nice crowd that likes to eat, one pound a person <laughs> on adults. One pound per person. One pound per okay. person. If you're on older people, not quite as much, two thirds of a pound. Kids, I tell people, figure a half a pound a person. Okay. You know, and that'll put you really close to where you want to be. Greg, now, this is the best prime rib I've ever oh, had. You've got so a couple excited. different ways that you like well, to this cut is it. The, the oven, this is an oven one. Yeah, the oven one you mentioned, kind of how to do that. And yep. so we, we've got those instructions. So what do you like about that mm. method? Um, ease and convenience. We cook it real slow. Oh, you never cook the fat out of it. You, you bring it up to 130, which is medium rare. 145, you like a medium well. Uh -huh. um, because we're cooking at 250, 260 degrees, and that's the temperature I like to cook meat at because you never cook the fat out of it. You're just, you're just, you know, it's just the way I like to do it. Biggest mistake. What are people doing wrong? Come on, um, give it to us. And give it to us tough. Overcooking the meat. Yeah. Well, Overcooking that's what we all do. We're yeah. afraid, and then we, we, we get worried about foodborne illness, and we just say, well, just char the thing, Hank. Ch just yeah. char it. Um, <laughs> Hank's the worst. Okay. When, <laughs> when you're cooking the meat, what we like to tell people to do, because you got everything from 1950 to 2018 ovens. People ask you temperatures and times. They've already asked us about cooking in wood stoves, which I ain't got a clue in the world on. <laughs> oh, no. you know? But we tell people, if, you know, when we give you your time temperature, because all ovens are different, check it one hour before you think it should be done. And then you take your temperature and see how fast it's climbing. Ah. Because if you're getting pretty close to that 130 range, it'll climb seven to eight degrees after you shut your oven off, just from the internal temperature of the meat. Just keeps cooking. Yeah, and so, and if you're not there, you can always increase it a little bit. But you, you know, you want it to come in in that, you know, 140 range, which is what the average person will serve on an average meal. Your end cuts will be a little more well done for the person who wants it well done. Yeah. And the center is going to have a little more pink in it for the person who wants a little more rare. All right, Greg, I want to try more, and I want to try some that was prepared in a smoker. How long are you smoking your prime rib? Ooh boy. That smoked for about two and a half hours this morning. Um, when we were doing it, Whoa. and um, 
And then that's going to cook a little hotter because we use the regular smoke generator like a Traeger or one of the smoke houses you buy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. Because my big electronic houses, I can control everything all the way down. Where What you buy oh, won't quite have that. Sure. And so we'll, we smoked it for about two and a half hours. There's a smoke setting on the one we have. Most of them don't have that. But you want to do it. Your settings will start around 225 degrees. What's so great about this is it doesn't taste overly smoky. You still really taste right. the meat. It's not like so oh heavily smoked that that's it. And it is super tender. It is. That's the thing. It's wow. just so tender. It's not dried out. It is just Yum. Great. That one went to 138 degrees when we were pulling it out of the oven this morning. And on a smoker like that, as you're getting closer to being done, yeah. we'll smoke it for the two and a half, three hours to really get it. And you can see there's a little pink ring around the outside. And that's actually where you can see the smoke is penetrating the meat in. And then we will take it and then we will cover it with aluminum foil so that you, because you'll have your ajou in the pan, you cover it with aluminum foil, and you'll more steam it. So you uh -huh. don't overcook it, it doesn't dry out for you. What have you done, what are you doing? Uh, I just found that there's a, um, one of these electric knives, and I just have <laughs> never played with them, I've never you been allowed like to. You like using these? Hey, uh, if somebody doesn't want to spring for prime rib, maybe they're, they're going through the holidays on a budget. Yep. Um, chuck eye, that's a great second option? Chuck eye is a great suck, second option. Actually, when you're cutting it, the only thing that's separating your chuck eye from your rib eye, prime rib, is where you take your knife and you break your cattle down. So oh, one really? side of the blade, it's $11 a pound. The mm. other side of your knife blade, it's now at $5 a pound. Wow. So the chuck eye will have the same texture, the same marbling and everything, you know, as you start into the meat. And uh, Greg, I know, every day. Hungry, He's Greg? having fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's your and, cup, uh, man. It's just a real good option for you if you're doing it. It tastes great. It tastes and great. a lot of times with the chuck eye, because it is not like a prime rib, I like to use it like for stackers. I'll take an electric knife like you had, I'll slice it thin, it makes an excellent sandwich. Oh, cool. You got your aju, you can slice it thin, put it back in your aju in the pan. You can hold it if you do it a little bit, you know, like at 135, 140. You can slice the whole thing up ahead of time for your company. Put it back in your pan with your aju. It's going to just keep sucking up flavor and Listen. moisture. Oh, Greg. Yeah, Find a guy who knows really more good. about know. meat than Greg, and I'll buy you dinner. This is so great, Greg. This is delicious. So we have all of Greg's advice for buying and cooking prime rib on our website, TwinCitiesLive.com. And then that's where you'll find the contact information for his shop, which is about 40 minutes south of St. Paul. It's worth it. Bring your truck. Oh, so good. Bring a cooler. Load so it up. I want all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the Minnesota Beef Council for bringing Greg up here today. You know, their website is full of free recipes for your holiday meal planning. Check out mnbeef.com. Org. And a big thanks to the Minnesota Beef Council for sponsoring Twin Cities Live. Okay.